I started comedy in New Orleans in 2001. So it's been a while. And now, because of the business and the way things work, I live in both New York and LA. Oh, you're bi-coastal? So what do you have, two apartments? You're rich. I'm like, no, I have two friends and they have apartments and we've worked out a deal where I live with both of them. When the first, when you first have that realization that you want to be like a performer and you want to be in movies and on television and things of that nature, you're like, oh wow, I want to live in Hollywood. Then you actually get there and you're like, there's nothing but fucking homeless people and tourists. It's a pretty rough place to live because it's just not a neighborhood. Where I live in Brooklyn, in uh, Core Green, Brooklyn, you know, I walk outside, there's uh, bodegas, there's coffee shops, there's a fucking park, there's life and just people. Out in Hollywood, where I live when I'm in LA, like Ghostbusters, all right, wee, Johnny Cash flipping the bird, whoa, I'm fucking, watch out for me, I'm controversial with this t-shirt. All of the cliches you hear about this city are absolutely fucking true. You know, you meet someone in a bar, and within that first fucking 20 minutes, they're resume bombing you. You know what I mean? They're like, oh yeah, oh you do comedy? That's cool, that's cool, cool. You ever do the comedy store? Yeah, that's cool, that's cool. So you got an agent? Oh, that's cool, yeah, man, I, I fucking, I have an agent, I have two agents, I have a commercial, and then like a theatrical agent, and then like, I used to want to do film, but now I'm like, you know, fuck it, do TV. That's where it's at, bro, you know what I mean? Like, just like, I'm out, I'm out there just looking for that next breaking bag, because I could be like, you know, I can totally do Jesse, I could, it's like, Shut the fuck up. So this is the uh, Chinese theater, right? Which we've all seen. You see uh, in a lot of movies, you see on television growing up, you're like, wow, that majestic Chinese place. And then when you actually come and see it for the first time, it's like, ha, oh, all right, got it. You're over it, like immediately. That's how a lot of things in LA are. This is the Dolby Theater, formerly the Kodak Theater. This is where the Oscars happen every year. This is where the red carpet is. It's here on Hollywood Boulevard. They shut the fucking thing down for a mile in either direction. But when you watch the Oscars on TV, it looks like a magical palace in the magical land of Hollywood in the clouds. And oh, it's all, the limos are coming from God. How far did these limos have to travel to get here to this magical Hollywood castle? The truth is, it's on Hollywood Boulevard. Less than two blocks down is a McDonald's. A McDonald's that some poor fucker making minimum wage can't work at that day because they have to shut down the whole fucking street so the celebrities can suck each other off. Like that's what you gotta love about this city. Everyone's nice all the time because they don't know who you are, especially if they don't know who you are. Like everyone's super nice because they, no one wants to offend anyone because everyone's trying to be famous, so they don't want to. They don't want to rub anybody the wrong way because that person could end up being a producer or a director. L.A. That's a fucking L.A. It's so. It's just. I'm so excited. It's so exciting. Everyone is so excited. There's. It, everyone is so funny. That is so funny. <laughs> hey, oh my God, we love him. We love her. We are so excited. I, I prefer New York. I love New York City. Um, that has a lot to do with the lifestyle, though. That's a lifestyle choice, mainly in the sense that I just love walking around and I, 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 I love the sort of pedestrian life of New York. You know, when you think New York City, you think Manhattan, you think Empire State Building, you think uh, Statue of Liberty, you think, you know, cars honking their horns, uh, you think, uh, you know, Wall Street. Yeah, that's all whatever, but Brooklyn, I feel, is like the real, where kind of like that real New York attitude is kind of shifted to, that real New Yorker day-to-day, -day, you know? Something beautiful about living in the middle of it all, in like... In, in, in the beauty, and it's still, it's still like, listen to that, you know? On, you go two blocks that way or that way, you're just, it's just madness, just loud. Brooklyn and like, guy, you know, guys with fucking dreads older than your parents wrapped up or pushing, you know, selling incense that they, we got this from West Africa, you know, and it's like, oh, yes, yes, that's culture. And then 
There's another guy fucking who's been on that corner for 30 years collecting cans and he gives you a smile and he's a nice guy and you're like, I want to, you want to go buy a Coke and slam it and so you can give him the can and it's like, yes, hey, how are you, buddy? And then, then there's of course like the, the fucking like yuppie white people with their like six year old in a stroller and he's bitching because he wants a kombucha and his mom like, no, no, you already had two kombuchas today. And I used I used to walk dogs myself. That was the fun part. Oh when yeah. When they started when they start going at each other. Oh yeah. She's That's just a puppy. She doesn't know better. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny too when people stop you and want to pet your dog and you're like I'm at work right now. Yeah. Well, I mean I don't mind if they're friendly, but I hate when people just go up to them and not ask yeah. me because some of them do bite. Yeah. Yep. And then you're like told you. Yeah. <laughs> I was like well you should have asked. Yeah. Have a good one. All right. Take care. That was uh. My job, my, one of my longest jobs in New York, one of my longest day jobs, I was a dog walker. Like, nothing is, well, there's a few things better, but it's a lot of fun when, like, you get, you're on the subway, and it's, like, a whole fucking 11th grade class. Like, they're, like, they all just got out of school, they're all riding to their stop. Like, you know, before they got on, people are just minding their own business, iPods in, books out, ignoring one another. And then, you know, a dozen 16-year-olds get on and just wah, and just fucking turn into chaos. You're not reading that book anymore. You can't <laughs> because someone's yelling in your ear. You, iPod? Ha! You think music's loud enough to drown out the sounds of fucking teenage Brooklyners, Brooklynites? I don't. I don't ever plan to have children, Scott. If you ever have children, or anyone who watches this, if you ever have children, raise your kids in Brooklyn. You know what I mean? It seems like a fun fucking place to be a, to be a teenager. What we got here might be the perfect Brooklyn Triangle. To the right, you've got the white yuppie couple walking their dogs. Directly next to them, you've got the very attractive black couple, sort of tanning, hanging out, topless. And then right behind me, you've got a little Hasid soccer going on. <laughs> That's adorable. That's just a... <laughs> It's just an elderly Jewish couple kicking a soccer ball back and forth. And here comes Timothy and Shay, probably her name's Shay, walking their matching puggles. Worlds collide here in Prospect Park. Worlds collide. This is what I fucking love about Brooklyn, New York City. You're just walking, there's a city, it's loud, there's buses, there's people yelling, there's ca cabs honking, and whoa! Whoa, what? What? Woods? Quiet? Birds chirping? Serenity? Ah. This is, this is why I love this city, man, because there's little surprises like... I mean, like this. Like, just kind of, you just walk around. Like, you don't need a plan for your... I didn't know today I was going to end up looking at ducks on an allergy-covered pond. When you're, when you're in L.A., you have to have a plan. You have to have a plan of attack. You know, I'm going to go right. You have to block it out. And like, But sometimes it's like, hey, maybe just living life. You get inspired. You're kind of like writing, constantly living here because you're just constantly, scenery's changing. There's so much spontaneity, so much energy, so much movement, so much life that I feel that it's why it's great to be a comedian living here because you just... You're absorbed in it, and you're, you know, if you're, if you, if you need inspiration, all you gotta do is fucking leave your apartment. <laughs> According to great historians like Jay Z or Notorious B.I.G., Brooklyn apparently was dangerous at some point. <laughs> <laughs> that Brooklyn shit, that was some real shit. Not anymore. Now it's like, yo, son, you heard that cafe got kombucha on tap? <laughs> If I were like a dope dealer, that would be a pickup spot for me. You know how they do that? We've all seen The Wire. It's in Lincoln's hat, in the arch. You gotta get in the hat. You gotta, yeah, I know you gotta climb. It's a, it's a good drop spot. The cops will never see it. No, don't put the cash in there. Just mail the cash to me. But the, the drugs are gonna be in Lincoln's hat, in the arch. Look at this dude, turn it, turn it. Yes. 
Where'd he go? You see that? Coming right at us. <laughs> Man, that guy is just excited to be alive. Or he's fucking eye out of his mind. I don't know, because he's in too good a shape to be a... You know what I'm saying? He's in way too good a shape to be a junkie. He's just happy to be alive. Just what if we're just sitting here filming this, goofing off, and then we see in the background just like a tentacle, like pop up, just roof, both dogs. Like... That's that Brooklyn shit. I told him. I told him. I told him I could let them dogs play in that water. That motherfucking squid. You crazy ass squid in that shit, dog. Boom. stage telling a story and had this amazing like memory this like epiphany like a memory that I hadn't had since I was honestly probably 13 years old something that I had that was probably so disturbing and it really is disturbing that I fucking blocked it out so was so embarrassed and self-conscious about it blocked it out I also do this weird shit I'll write out a set list and then like as I'm waiting to go on I just fucking write over what I've already written like three or four times <laughs> 